Hello fit and healthy friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching and today is another day of half marathon training. So I'm going to be sharing with you what I ate for breakfast to fuel my run, what my run was today. And then I'm also going to share a little bit about why I choose the gels and the nutrition products that I do for running, not only to fuel my body, but also to prevent GI issues. If you're new here, we are currently in a series on training for a half marathon where I, as a registered dietitian, am sharing a lot of my nutrition tips, but also some of my training tips and just random things to help you improve your running as well. So this is going to be this morning's breakfast. I've shown these before that I've been doing this before runs because they're very small. They don't take up a lot of space in your stomach. They don't have high fiber and they have about 40 grams of carbohydrates, but I need a little bit over 50. So to do that, I'm adding in a Ucan Energy Gel today. These are about 20 grams of carbs. They're slow digesting and will help to give me that extra energy for this run since it is high intensity. So these will give me plenty of energy while being easy to digest, not making my stomach too full and giving me what I need to do this interval run well. And per usual, I'm having a cup of lucid coffee with coconut and oat milk. Today though, I added in some Rise Superfood coffee. This is, they're very similar, so this also has mushrooms. Um, this one just tastes a little bit less strong. This one has a stronger taste and I prefer lucid, but today I just mix them up because I'm running out of lucid. So put both of those in there and I thought I would share this one because I do have a discount code for Rise which I will put right here and in the description if you wanna try that one out. Unfortunately, I don't have one for Lucid. And then for the run itself, this is what I'm taking. This is a lot of my usual stuff. So this is about 14 ounces of water with a little bit of electrolytes and glutamine in there. And then I'm taking it, uh, you can energy gel. I'm also today gonna to take a cliff shot. Um, I haven't used these in quite a while, and this is one that doesn't have a lot of fructose, which I'll talk more about later. So I'm going to try this today and see how it goes with the higher intensities and see if it settles well in the stomach. Um, so I may take both of these, or I may take this and then do cliff blocks. I haven't decided yet. I'm just taking all these to give me options depending on what I feel like. So today was a 10 mile run. But what I did today for my long run, rather than just go out and do easy miles, was I did intervals. So I did some intervals that were a little bit slower than race pace, and then I did some intervals that were much faster than race pace. And what that essentially did was even out to be approximately the race pace that I am aiming for. The reason why I did this is that a lot of times when you're training for a race, the closer you get to the race, the more you want to mimic that pace that you're going to be running at. So if you're always running easy miles, you can't expect to show up to a race and do a really fast pace that you haven't really trained before. If you're doing lots of sprint and high intensity fast work, that's not exactly going to mimic what you're doing in a race. So that type of work is important and it is going to help you get faster. But the closer I get to a race, the more I start to lengthen my intervals and make them a little bit more similar to the actual race pace that I'm aiming for, because that way I will train my body to work at these faster paces for longer periods of time so that when I show up at the race, I'm not expecting my body to do something it hasn't done before. So that's what I did today with my husband. We went to a spot that is really easy. It's just kind of a straight shot and it's easy to run back and forth doing intervals. So one direction is two miles, then we could turn around and do another two miles back. So basically what we did was two mile intervals. The first interval was a little bit slower than race pace, kind of getting warmed up. Then we rested for four minutes, turned around and went faster than race pace on the way back because it was just slightly downhill. And then we repeated that so I did five intervals of two miles, totaling 10 miles. And then I had a little bit of a warm up and a cool down. So in total, it ended up being an 11 mile run. That was not fun. Second interval, already hurting. So this was a really hard run. It was not comfortable. And I practiced eating a gel at the same time. I tried a different one than I normally use to see if that would be okay on the gut. And everything went well with that. All right, so as I said, since I just got back from my run, I'm gonna head inside, get down some protein and some carbohydrates to help replenish 
the glycogen in my body, get some amino acids back into my muscles and help my body to repair. Um, my legs are not feeling great, so I'm actually gonna hop in a bath. This is a really good way to help with recovery, just getting that blood flowing. I like to put in essential oils that are helpful in reducing inflammation and repairing the muscles. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw some Epsom salts in there, rest, relax, stretch out the muscles, and then I'm gonna return and share about those gels that I use for fueling and why I pick what I do. All right, so I just want to wrap up this video by talking about why I choose the gels and the nutrition products that I do for running and racing. My choices are based on two main things, ingredients and GI symptoms. I've talked about before that I pick some of the things that I do based on how they may affect gastrointestinal tract or digestive issues while exercising. And this is a pretty common issue with runners because running there's so much jostling with the stomach and the higher intensity you go and the longer you run, the more likely you are to have GI issues. So one thing I look for is looking at the ingredient list and just making sure there's not an excessively long ingredient list with colors and dye and a bunch of natural and artificial flavorings and colors and that type of thing, just because I want to keep my health as best as possible. So the more you can avoid really highly processed junky type ingredients, the better. It is a little bit tough when you get into sports nutrition products. There does just tend to be a little bit more of that in there, but it is temporary. We don't use them all the time, hopefully. After that, I'm looking for specific ingredients. So I have a particular sensitivity to foods that are high FODMAP, and I will explain this more in a future video, but what a lot of runners will relate to is products with high fructose. When we have excess amounts of fructose, especially when it's more than glucose, it can cause GI upset in people because it draws water into the intestines and causes bloating. And sometimes those things can lead to things like cramps. And that's my most common issue with running is a side stitch or an abdominal cramp. But other people may have issues like nausea or diarrhea or a strong need to go to the bathroom or even vomiting. So if you commonly have some sort of GI symptom and you can't quite pinpoint why, this could be one of your triggers. This is why on this run, I took a Ucan gel and a Cliff gel because neither of these have fructose in them. Cliff is based primarily on maltodextrin, which is kind of like a higher processed form of glucose. And Ucan uses a non-GMO cornstarch that's kind of a slower digesting carbohydrate and tends to work really well with people who have GI sensitivity when running. I also like to use Cliff Blocks. I've mentioned this before, and that's because these don't have fructose or high fructose corn syrup and they're gluten-free. So I've never had any GI issues from these. Now you might look at the ingredient lists on things like these and think, wow, I thought you said that you like to look for more you know, natural products, not so much junk in them. These do have less than ideal ingredients in them. However, if you are someone that struggles with things like high fructose, then if you try to consume things like applesauce or, you know, those little packets that are made with apple, or you do a full ripe banana, or you actually eat an apple or certain fruits that are high in fructose, then those could cause GI issues. So while it is ideal to use natural foods, they don't tend to digest well for most people. And if you are more sensitive to certain ingredients that you might find in things like honey or agave or apple, then you might have trouble consuming actual real foods. And again, once in a while when we're running a racing, we may have to go with something a little less clean, a little bit more processed, but that will digest well. Now, I do want to add a comment about this cliff gel that I used today. As I mentioned, I had one of these during the run. I didn't end up taking the Ucan or the cliff blocks today. I just did this. And the Cliff gel went great during my run. No GI issues, no upset. However, after I came home, relaxed, shot some video, took a bath, all of that, I did actually end up having a very upset stomach. And I'm not sure if it came from this. Now, two possible causes. This is a very concentrated form of glucose. Sometimes when you take gels like this, you need to consume them with a lot of water. During the run, I didn't consume a lot of water. Afterwards, I tried to drink a lot, but it could be that there may have been some digestive issues because of that. It could be the maltodextrin because some people are sensitive to maltodextrin, or it's possible that the source of maltodextrin could have been a gluten source. Nowhere on the box or the label does it claim that these are gluten-free. 
I am someone who cannot eat gluten. So the average runner, average athlete, there's no reason you need to go gluten free unless you absolutely know that it causes you issues. And actually, sometimes it's the fructans, not gluten, that cause GI issues. But that's another topic for another video. But unless you know you are sensitive to gluten, you don't have to avoid it. I know I cannot have gluten. And sometimes it's hidden in things like this. So maltodextrin can come from gluten sources. And nowhere does it say that this is certified gluten-free. So maybe that is what caused my GI issues. Also, if you're someone who has ongoing GI symptoms during and in between exercise, and you can't figure out what it is, maybe you've tried a lot of different things, then you might wanna check out my gut health guide that I have on my website. It's very affordable and it essentially walks you through a little bit of an elimination diet process to help kind of clear your system, repair your system, and then identify your specific food triggers so that you can figure out what foods you might need to avoid or you might need to reduce, or if those foods are actually an indication that you might need to talk to your doctor about a little bit more serious problem. I will put the link for that in the description. And I would also recommend if you do get that guide to contact me for a free consult so that I can help make sure that it is the right process for you because it may be a little bit different for everyone and your unique situation. And that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, blessings on your health and running journeys.